Hey, it's Jack Lines, my automator, and today we're going to cover what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. It was another pretty busy week. All right, let's share my desktop and use Prompt Assistant to launch recently modified files. Now, you're going to notice a little difference here. Um, last week, I realized when I was doing this, why, why not have it preview the file that I select? So now I can select a file and use Scintilla Control to display... Uh, color coding on the each file, which is I think really cool. We're also building working on a tool that's going to allow us to jump over a lot of different file types. We're kind of creating a basic file explorer, and then it can preview files and apply some sort of coloring. And we're going to make a tool that makes it easy for you. You can have up to eight different colors, and so you put in your keywords and just um, give it the extension, and then it will preview them for you. So that'll be it's in the works. Um, I don't know if I, I'm actually off this week, this coming week for a little bit over uh, until the following Tuesday, so uh, the guys will be on it. I'll be in contact with them, but I'm going to purposely try not to work because I haven't done that. Uh, I've done it for every day for five years, so I think I'm going to take a little break. Anyway, converted to V2. Um, I don't know. Let's see. What was that? I think we were testing with the, the WebView 2 tool and using an ActiveX control instead. Um, oh, this is it. This is the file explorer. Excuse me. Okay. So that's what Irfan was working on that. File Commander? Why is there a File Commander AHK file? I don't know. Under File Explorer? I'm not sure. Maybe Irfan was looking at that as an example. I think he was looking at someone else's done, and we were just seeing it's probably a V1 script. Yeah, it's, it looks, yeah, it equals, yeah, no, we don't do that anymore in V2. Uh, da, 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 so pro and also notice, I don't remember if this was in last week's, but we, we now have icons so these three are the same color because they're in the same folder so the the icon color and shape indicate um when there's a bunch in a row it's really the, probably the same thing so this is just me playing with studio and we do have a v2 version of studio which works pretty well now it's a uh, can crash occasionally but I, it's become much more stable detect file but so we were we were on a call with a client call um last week russell a client it's a hero member and he was trying to determine if a given program had been launched in 32-bit or 64-bit. And I'm like, you know, from memory, you could jump to a certain spot in that file and look. And I couldn't remember what it was for. Look what for. I just remembered we could do this. And so I said, hey, can't we use, um, we should add that probably to our inspection tool, like our Ultimate Spy or Automator Spy, um, to be able, when you drag your um, little crosshairs to the program, it would tell you the bitness of the program as well. So um, Claude actually cranked out this example, which I don't remember how to, is it alt, I think? Oh, interesting. Error, recently modified. Well, detect, so that opens it in your default editor. And now when I run this, is <laughs> a video, for, oh, this actually, this is FileX Pro. It's got changed. Oh, this, the example, they overwrote my, oh, it's detect file type. Yeah, so this is a different one. We'll, we'll cover this in a couple minutes. Um, during the hero call, we updated one of the detect file type, um, the example I had, and then I think we were demonstrating FileX Pro, so it looks like it got overwritten. Um, determine bitness. Now, this is the one that actually I was talking about, so let me alt click. Now, that is this script, um, and, and at some point we'll make this code available, or you can just go write it. But when I run it, it gives you a little GUI. Now, we wouldn't have as part of the tool. This is just what Claude built for me. Um, and then you would browse to an executable. And we need an executable. So let's go to my D colon slash Windows. And in here somewhere, uh, the Win32, I think. Well, here's, here's a reg editor notepad. Now that, I think, let me hit check. Now that says it's a 64-bit. What that does is it peeks inside the file. We use the file seek, use a file object to jump to a specific location and then look for um, very specific things like, like this, kind of looking for this. And if, whether it's a 32 or 64 bit uh, value there, that's how it knows. And sometimes it, it may not know, uh, but if the file is uh, not set up properly. But yeah, we figured why not include that in our inspection tools. So FileX Pro, this is the one I was just mentioning, and Scan wrote the original FileX Pro in V1. Unfortunately, it's really not 
fun to use. Uh, it uses a very, and I'm not knocking what he did because it's it's really quite complicated. Um, our tool, and let me see if this is this is in projects also. No, I need the one that's. Um, well, we'll probably be getting to it down here somewhere. Uh, the File X Pro example. So let's hold off on that for now because this is this is just my work, and we don't want my work on that. Uh, I did use Claude to convert it to V2. And, and then I asked Irfan to look at it in Isaias, and we talked it through for quite a while. We found a, a different approach for what we want to do. So it's much more easier to use, but there's like over 1,100 file properties you might grab from any given file. And so we make it simple for you to do that. This was one of our clients just wanted to be able to have a hyperlink that you could click. So I found an example and made that. OpenAI. So we've been doing a lot of stuff with the OpenAI API. And uh, we released one last week on using Whisper, so I can hold down a, a key or a mouse. I think I have the middle mouse. Let me see if it's actually running right now. Yes, so now I can talk, and when I talk, it's going to display the uh, text into uh, the a notification kind of like this, and it's on my clipboard. Uh, so now I'm going to let go. So now that I let go, it set that. <laughs> yeah, look at that. So, and it wrote it all um, to here, and now it's on my clipboard, and that's using the Whisper model under claw uh sorry ChatGPT's uh, uh api so it's really accurate really cool and now Irfan yesterday was working a bit on being able to hit a hotkey say what you want have that go to ChatGPT and act as a prompt and then it's going to return it into like a web view 2 tool so a browser almost um, and then you can continue your conversation there if you want to because that's the important part right usually you don't get what you want the first try you have to keep talking to it and well, we're going to make a slightly different version of if you select text first and hit your hotkey, then I could say, hey, take this text and reply to it saying, I really love the idea and want to incorporate it. And then it would look at that text and reply to them. And let's say it was an email, right? So you're basically giving instructions for what you've selected, right? So I think that'll be really cool, but we'll still use that same interface to display the conversation and you can get it and probably copy it to the clipboard because you'll probably want to paste it into whatever tool you were in originally. Perhaps, no, yeah, I think that's the best way because we don't know for sure what you're gonna want to do with it. But yeah, that was uh, that was using the OpenAI. Now we have a, our API class is available for download, which you can grab and start working with the different models. And now they just released a mini, uh, OpenAI 4.0 mini, which apparently is pretty darn good and saves you even more money and it's it's very fast as well. It's better than three point five, so you might give it's still if you're using it to create V two code, I would use Claude. I wouldn't use the um, OpenAI at the moment. Hopefully that changes in the future. And if not, we're going to start working on the Claude API. We we did start, but um, that conversation process it's time consuming to build you know a class that works with that. So uh, we're holding off on it for now. But maybe maybe while I'm away, maybe that's what one of the things Irving can work on because it's a it's something that's going to take you know several days of work. All right, so let's keep going. So here's um, native. So these are just things using used with the OpenAI, even though they're they're different folders and subfolders. So they seem like different things, but they're really not. Uh, they're libraries we're using with it, creating tests. ClipShare, uh, ClipShare is our tool. We use it, and it's you know I'm gonna have to revisit that. It's almost ready. If you have a shared folder, like using a cloud drive or whatever, I can copy and then Isaiah can paste, right? Which and vice versa. Um, also, we can send messages to each other with it, so that's pretty cool. Um, pretty helpful if you're using more than one computer. And yeah, it's it's one that we need to. We we made it where it was dynamic uh, before. We hard coded in us so we could chat with each other and use it. But we were trying to make it more generic where we can share it with everybody because it's a, it's a cool concept. But it's had little, we got it. I can't put my finger on what's wrong with it, so we haven't shared it yet. Um, this MP3 Ripper, I made an update to that. Tool's really awesome. I had some FLAC files, and they weren't, so here, actually, and this is why I love being able to see, uh, I can't make this taller, but um, being able to see the code because in it, if we scroll down here, uh, we also created an FFmpeg library so the the um, we have a class that actually keeps all of our FF make here we go here are the extensions now flack wasn't in this so I added flack you can see it right here and then I said let me just because that extension limits what the files you can give it to rip and I'm like why isn't flack in there so I added it and thankfully FFmpeg could handle it so it converted my flack files to mp3 um, and, and here I can show you again we haven't shared this tool yet 
So I can choose um, the audio bit rate that I want. Um, also, it's going to write the files in the same folder. So if you were ripping MP3 files, basically using it to convert the file format, because let's say you had it at 320 and you wanted them smaller. So let's say just people talking, right? So probably 64 or 48K are probably enough. 32 sounds a little blah. Um, or you might also go with OGG file format for that, by the way. But you can select a folder or a file, and it does the folder recursively also, which is cool. Um, and it will go through, or you can drag them all in here, and it, it rips all the audio. Um, in, in this one converts them in different formats. We have another one that will take videos and rip the audio. So it's it's really fast, really easy to use. So again, we haven't shared these yet, but they, they will be coming. Um, MP Ripper, quick raw edit. This is another one of those FFmpeg tools that's just amazing. This tool, you would drop a video. Now, <laughs> don't laugh at the, the, the width of these. I made my, I don't really don't like the width of the, the scroll bars in Windows 11. And here you can still see it kind of shrinking, getting bigger. Well. In the normal Windows 11, this is even smaller and it expands, but it's just really annoying to get your mouse to the right spot. So I made mine wider, but that unfortunately monkeys with your other thing. So um, maybe we need to identify if we could, when it's a scroll bar, I should do that, but not on these. But I don't think that's possible because I just made one change and I'm pretty sure it had, it was, had to do with this. This is just a byproduct of it. Anyway, you can drag a video in here. Let's see, I think I got a short video now let's say you had an hour-long video i don't actually don't know what oh the, the, that's my live recording here's the whisper video let's just drag that in there and we could play it um i can jump around i can drag this and i can say oh, i'm gonna start here you know, and i would usually play this and turn up and down the volume i'm gonna end it here um and then i can hit cut media and when you do that Actually, it will, it will just rip it, and it, it already did. It extracted that little bit um, that fast. And now in that folder, if I bring this back over and refresh, there should be a whisper, yeah, trim.1. So that extracted 12 seconds lickety split. And, it, and it, you know, it's a video. I mean, and you can do this with audio as well. It's really cool. So um, we did a lot of work on this to update the... This, this drag and, and um, making that work properly was not easy. That took Isaiah's um, and, and a bit of Irfan's time. You can still see it's a little quirky at times. But yeah, let's reset. So that's a pretty cool tool. We have a lot of tools that wrap FFmpeg that should be out in a while. AI audio transcribe. This is the that whisper tool that I mentioned earlier. Um, that one is, is available. Uh, you can grab that now on the automator. This is just more of the lib. This is that FFmpeg class I mentioned, which I don't think will make that available. Um, and notify lib, record audio examples. Huh. So I'm glad, see this is why I like recording these videos. I can show them to the guys and say, hey, we got, we got a problem here. Um, these were, I don't know what we're doing. Oh, I guess he was. Something with the record audio lib not notify example. I don't know why they're listed there though. That's just a weird spot. I guess he moved. He created a copy of notify under there. And these are the examples, and that's why they're showing up. Um, our notify class. We have a lot of examples. There's a lot more than just this. There's folders of them with examples in each one. So yeah, that uh, that notify class is really amazing. Record or with the audio lib. Maybe I do need to rethink this and say it just looks at the initial subfolder because uh, that, that makes it look like these are all different things, but they're really not. Talk to AI. This is the one where we actually talk to AI. So you hold down the hotkey, say what you want. It submits to AI as a prompt, returns back. So I don't think it's ready to run yet or I'd try it, but uh, that's what we were working on. Oh, we, wow. We had 182 files. Yeah. So I think, I think someone copied some of the files over and now they're, it looks like we did a lot when we really didn't. Well. Probably worked on about 80 or so. Uh, is this adding? So our triggers class, that one is getting very, maybe I'll have Irfan also finish that one up because it's almost ready to share. It should be. It uh, allows you to easily assign a hotkey, let, let your users assign hotkeys and choose a preference um, and updates in the system tray, which is really cool.
transcribe. You know, so we made a tool that's really amazing. You and I did a video on that with Isaiah. Um, it's actually ready to create a download, I believe. So you can drag a video file onto the tool. It submits it, transcribes it, returns it back, and then it allows you to search. You can type, and it will search for the the things and highlight where it is. And you can click the time and, and see it. Then we take that file. And, or no, actually, sorry, we, we decided to go ahead and just have them as separate tools. We made a separate tool, which um, is used for translation. So it transcribes them, and then it will translate, it sends the transcriptions using the timestamps back to ChatGPT, and it has ChatGPT translate it in other languages, and then puts them back, and we burn them into the video. So I can't wait to do a video on that, but I'll, I'll be gone next week, so probably won't share it this, this coming week, but the week after, we should be able to get that out. Um, very, very cool approach yeah that's interesting there's something weird going on here but we're almost at the end of the list oh come on yeah it well this wmi we were working on a wmi um version that the v1 version um, it wasn't easy to change over, and then Claude helped us a little bit, and then Isaiah was working on it. He got it to do some, like listing of fonts, um, but some other stuff didn't work. But that WMI is incredibly powerful, allows you to peek at a lot of the internal settings and values you have on your Windows computer, and it's it's amazing. Um, so hopefully we can get that converted as well at some point. But hope you enjoyed. Please like the video if you learned something here or interested in our scripts. It really helped us out. Uh, if you like the video, we get a lot more views. Don't forget, if you want to learn some of the stuff in AutoHotKey, uh, we have a lot of great courses, and they're double your money back guarantee, so you got nothing to lose. Um, have a great day. Thank you. Cheers.